CEO Ronald Hickler from Creating the Difference. We got a dark code. Now, here's what's interesting. This dark code is now the new 4K fast dark code. So we're going to talk a little bit about this CTD bowling ball surface scanner and a 4K fast dark code. Billy LeVan is going to go ahead and scan this bowling ball to kind of see what the surface is of this bowling ball from the factory. So that was 2,000 there. 2,000. All right. So this bowling ball is sitting right at 2,000, which is fine. So now we know that, which we're going to be able to throw this bowling ball. We're going to use some specto bowling, a little bit of clutch bowling, and we're going to kind of show you um, a little bit of performance that we can do with this bowling ball and alter with this bowling ball. So we'll start out by just taking a peek at it right off the rip. Yep, she's strong. <laughs> now, Dark Coat is one of Billy LeVan's favorite bowling balls. He actually had a couple 300s, a couple 800s with this bowling ball, but he had the shiny version, the 1500 grit polished version. So one of the things that we wanted to do was kind of talk to you a little bit about how to get that performance back, especially using the CTD products to do it. He's actually using that van pad, that big, amazing microfiber pad to get all the oil off of his bowling ball very, very quickly because it's got a textured microfiber pad. But we're not only gonna show you the performance of the 4K Fast, but then we're actually gonna go into the pro shop. We're gonna use the process that CTD has developed to be able to get the bowling ball to perform. It's similar to the factory finish, which was a 1500 grit uh, polish finish, which to be fair, when they shine the bowling ball up, or when they did shine the bowling ball up, they did not sand the ball to 1500 grit and then polish it. They actually have a little bit more of a detailed process that they use to be able to get the bowling ball uh, shiny. And in fact, what they use is a grit in their polish that starts out at 320 and degrades down to 1500 grit in a compound form that allow the bowling ball to get shiny. But we're gonna use our products and we're gonna show you exactly how to get that performance back of the dark coat if you want the bowling ball to react like it was when it was out of the factory. Now here's what's interesting, right? So we're bowling on a house shot which means you should have some room for error. But because the dark coat is a much stronger piece now because it's got some surface to it, you don't necessarily have all that room for error that you would have had before. And the real reason for that is just because it's just too strong, right? Now where the bowling ball would kind of push a little bit more in the oil, see the friction and react aggressively off of it, which would give you room for error. Now when he misses in, the bowling ball still hooks a little bit too much. And if he hits the friction too early, it bounces off of it too hard. Well, that might be close. So a trip four pin. So Billy, why don't you go ahead and cut the lights off real quick? I want to show the group what, what you're bowling on and where you're playing at. So you can kind of see, basically, the darker the blue, the more oil. He's got to be in a lot of oil here in order for him to be able to get this bowling ball to hit the pocket. Whereas before, with his other one, right, with his dark coat that was polished, he could play further to the right, and he'd have room for error. In this case, if he misses in, because the ball is so strong, the ball is going to recover or the ball will hook and it, and it will hook too much, which is not necessarily a good thing. So we got that a little bit right and he left the flat 10 pin. So I would tell you that this, is, this bowling ball reaction is, a, is not the best ball reaction for what we're bowling on right now. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna try to recreate the Storm 1500 grit polish reaction using true cut products. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break here, go into the pro shop, get this bowling ball shined back up, see how it performs, stay tuned. All right, so now we're in the pro shop. I have the dark code that it just, it, it performs too aggressively. We're gonna get you back to 1500 grit polish performance that you would get from a Storm Factory. What's interesting, and just kind of how it works out, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a 1500 grit true cut sanding pad first and then I'm gonna polish the ball with the True Cut Hand Applied Polish powered by Turtle Wax using the special polishing pad that we've got developed at, at, at uh, CTD, which is our premium polishing pad. I'm gonna show you how the whole process, and this is what you'd have to do to be able to get the performance back of the initial factory finish on this bowling ball, which was that 1500 grit polish. We're gonna start by using a little bit of conditioner, get the pad nice and wet. Um. Just go up and down four times. We'll do four sides. Now you say, why are you putting the 1500 grit surface on the bowl? Well, the real reason is, is you need some teeth 
in the bowling ball before we polish it in order to get that original performance back. Four sides. Get the pad nice and wet. Conditioner makes the pad last longer. It gives you a little bit more of an even cut too. All right, so that's the four sides. So that's done. Pull that off. Going to put in a CTD premium polishing pad. This is a special pad because it's going to be able to shine this bowling ball even though we've got some really aggressive teeth underneath it. CTD hand applied polish powered by turtle wax. Now here's the best part. You actually don't need a whole lot of polish to make this work. Now you say, I went up and down 10 times, and you say, why'd you go down 10? The reason is, is in order to be able to get the performance that we need, we need to be able to get that bowling ball to get to a shine. We need a little bit of heat as well, which is what's created the friction. And we want to be able to get this bowling ball to still have those teeth in it to be able to give us that performance we're looking for. Now, if you use a regular towel or a regular pad, you will not be able to create, recreate this finish. It's just not possible. You've got to use the combination of the polishing pad and the ball spinner as well. Just a little bit, not a lot. One more side. Same process. Perfect. So now you can see the ball is shiny, but look, there's actually lines in the ball. You can still see the lines in the bowling ball. And that's what we need to be able to get the performance back to how it was when this ball first came out, which was that 1500 grit polish. Stay tuned, we're hitting the lanes now. All right, so now we have the dark code and this is the CTD polish finish, right? It's 1500 grit. You see the lines under there, but it's still shiny. Billy, go ahead and scan this bowling ball and see what the scan is now. 5,500, greater than 5,500, which is what it should be. 5,000, give me one more. Greater than 5,500. So this bowling ball is now officially polished. We have kind of where we were playing at before. You also can see where we were playing at. Now, we're gonna have Billy move a little bit right. Obviously, he won't have as much hook, but he should have more room for error, and that's what matters here. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at that face. He already knows. He already knows. So now he's beginning to see more of that performance that he was kind of expecting, or at least the performance that he was liking out of his original bowling ball, because his original bowling ball was that 1500 grit polish. And we, took, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to recreate the performance of that polish finish, and we actually were able to do that. So I wanted you guys to be able to have a better understanding of that as well. So we'll have those more shots. 
wide right. That shot was definitely wide right. No worries. So we'll be able to take a peek at some of the data too, just to kind of see what's going on. So normally, um, obviously that shot was right here. I think we can actually go right up here and delete that shot. Yeah, we can delete it. And now when he does another shot, this one will go away. What do you think, Billy? It's different. It's way different. She's got a lot more back in now, right? Yes, yes. Not as early. Yes. A lot more back in, which is good because now, right, he actually is going to be able to move left. So we're going to see him move left to get this ball to the right. And this is kind of the reaction that if you had one of these balls to begin with, this is more like what you're used to seeing. Got that one in. Still a little much hook, a little bit much hook still. No worries, no worries, no worries. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete a couple of these shots off just so that we can get a real good view of kind of the old finish. Uh, that was probably pretty decent. Let's keep that one. Yeah, let's get rid of this one. So I'm cherry picking some of these shots here that way. We'll be able to get a real good comparison between the old and the new. All right, all right. He's just getting used to it, figuring it out here. We'll go ahead and delete a couple more of these shots out of here, especially some of the bad ones. We want to keep a good one. We're gonna delete that one and delete that one. There we go. All right, let's see what we got. I mean, you can see it's just a lot more angular piece now. You can kind of see that. So comparatively, right, that was this shot he threw right here. So it was in, it got further white, further right, and it recovered harder. So we'll throw it again. He's making an adjustment. Big move, he says. But if you have a question on how to get your reaction back to the original factory, this is how you can do it. Oh, that's a big move. Ooh. Tim back. Let's take a peek at that one. So we'll get rid of this shot here. That is that shot. You can see that right there. So he's actually in deeper. Look at that. He's actually in deeper, right, than he was to be able to get the bowling ball to the pocket. So this green line is the new polish finish. This blue line is the 4K Fast, which are, in this particular case, gained at 2,000 grit. You can kind of see they're definitely, it's actually kind of interesting, right? He's actually got to be more in uh, to be able to get the bowling ball to, to be able to hold pocket. But that one was left off his hand. Not a good shot off his hand. And that's okay. That's all right. We will delete that shot. That wasn't a good one. But it is very interesting to see that, right? Because you can tell there is a pretty big difference between kind of where we were and where we are to get these balls to hit the pocket. That's wide right again. But that's the difference, right? That's the difference because with the bowling ball that's shiny like that, you can miss right and the ball will still recover. That is a huge advantage. Um, you can see right there, the yellow line. He missed pretty far right, but because the bowling ball is shiny, it sees the friction. Let me show you. It sees the friction and recovers off the friction. Whereas if the bowling ball was dull, it would pick up a little too early and not be able to have enough to recover down lane. So this is the advantage of being able to have the bowling ball in its shiny format, its shiny fashion. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the bowling balls were so good to begin with. A lot of room for error, right? Flat 10 pin there, in just a smidgen. 
but and nonetheless, it's allowing you to be able to kind of have a much better idea. So Billy, let me just ask you a question real quick. So like, I mean, like I said, Dark Code was one of your favorite bowling balls. You know, tell me kind of what do you think now that we've shined it versus how it was when it came from the factory, which was a little bit, uh, which was dull. Well, when it was dull, I had to play in the oil really hard and I had to be really perfect with my line. If I got it a hair right, she'd kind of fly out and burn out and then she won't come back. And then when I kept it in, and missed in, she would take off immediately. So I had to throw it really perfect. Um, with this a little bit better, it creates a little more room for me. I missed right, she saved her energy, she come back and hit hard. I missed in a little bit, she holds, still recovers though. I like the shinier finish for this pattern a lot better. So that kind of gives you a little more insight about what we're doing here. So if you want to get your bowling ball back, if you had one of the old bowling balls that, that was manufactured, that was that old 1500 grit polish and you want to get it back, now you have the ability to do that and you've seen the process to be able to do that. I mean, she is nice and strong, nice and strong and a lot of back end. Well, now you've got some more insight on how to get 1500 grit polish back on your bowling ball using the True Cut system. On behalf of Billy LeVan, I am CEO Ronald Hickler from Create a Difference. Talk to you soon.